Hello everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today is another LEGO Top 10 Mocks of the Week episode where I come to you guys with the coolest custom creations I happen to see people building in LEGO bricks throughout this last week. Like always, there's way more than just 10 cool creations. I've linked as many as possible in the description below and I highly recommend you check out these builders on your own if you have any extra time. This week, the custom build that went up in our web store is the ATAP by David Buckles. He's expanding on his minifig your scale Clone Wars builds, and it's a very impressive model, both in terms of durability and detail. The link for the video is in the description below, as well as our web store, www.brickfault.toys, for custom LEGO instructions. All right, here's a quick highlight reel of some awesome builds before I get into my top 10. This is from Ruben, it's Falcor and Atreyu. Simple techniques, but definitely gets these characters across quite well. If you haven't seen the movie, I highly recommend it. Can you guess how big this LEGO room is from Heike M. I'm curious to know if those sheets are from official Lego sets. Here's another wonderful classic Americana old style build from Norton74 and I just checked out his Facebook. I've been saying his name wrong the entire time. It's Norton74 at least according to how it's written on his other channel. And here's something called the Pasanamaka Arrival of the Thai Whisperer by Michael Wazowski. Kowalski. Awesome desert detailing, excellent build for the Thai Whisperer, and this moment in time is captured quite well. Funny Stuffs did the Lego Rogal Dorn. Caretaker of the Eternal Forest has a wonderful minimalistic look. I don't know how to say the name of this designer, it is simply just a smiley face with X's for eyes. Ben Cossey has a great build here. Look at the lighting for the stairs, that is wonderful. More Johnny Thunder goodness from Hachiroku24. And this is a great example of custom chroming done right. This is the Ferrari F12. Another awesome car in red done at a much smaller scale here, the Mercedes-Benz AMG GTR by RGB900. Spaceman Legacy has some excellent photography skills here. Andrew Benz has officially the most colorful taco truck you'll ever see. Also, if you look closely, he used some incredibly rare and or possibly non-existent pieces here. You can always leave it to VB to disturb me. I feel like I can just hear one extremely ominous note in my head when I look at this build. The Brickologist titled this encounter on Planet X. Really great detailed vignette here. David7 has some excellent little designs for the Boston Dynamics dogs. Ido K titled this rooftop ride. It's all digital. And then they also made a bit of the motorcycle in real life afterwards. This is a nice build for an old schoolhouse by Master Builder KTC. Aaron Newman has a few of these micro dragon medieval builds that I highly recommend you take a look at. Here's just one of them. And then Blake Foster has this wonderful little snubby fighter called the Grumpy Nat Attack Fighter. And then magically Cylon TW made the Aqua Hawk and it's got a really similar shape. Moko's got an awesome mini robot frame. Great stances here. Marco Debon has another wonderful robot design. I love the lion face in the front. And now let's jump into the top 10 of the week. These of course are just my personal favorite picks. Feel free to disagree and they are not in any particular order of best to worst. From Jonas Cram, this is Fruit Merchant on her snail mount. So you can tell based on the uh, builds on the side here how big this is supposed to be. Those are some cherries hanging off to one side. I'm going to assume raspberries, maybe even a blue raspberry if that exists in real life. And the flower petal design is awesome. I believe those are the arms for the shark suit person. I've never seen those arched or rounded bricks used for a sitting figure position before, which is a great little touch. And I believe that is a narrow little cape piece used for the snail tail at the very end. Excellent, excellent little build design here. Soccer Kid 6 has the RD613 Duger, and I love the splayed out stance of the treads in the front. It almost has a, a, a friendly look here. This almost looks like if Wally was designed for combat, he would look something like this. It's got sort of a clean design, it's a little bit cute, but the giant tire wheel in the back just has this fun, aggressive look piled on top. The little mandible arms in the very front are super excellent. And now we're looking at an awesome build from First Order Lego who has some great large designs under his belt. This is called Ambush on Geonosis. Just the build for the terrain on its own is insanely detailed. I would love to see what some of the internals for this look like because there's clearly some 
some strange and interesting connections and ultimately it really just makes this environment seem and feel very organic even though it really is just kind of a a desolate desert scene with interesting rock spires. On top of that you have some extremely gritty details. This is almost like what Star Wars would look like if it was an R-rated film. Michael Steindl did a build called the USCSS Nostromo and you can just tell based on the build style that this is most likely a ship that is extremely massive in size, yet built skilled way, way down. And I like that that just translates perfectly in Lego bricks. Now I've seen that two by two rotating plate piece uh, used as detailing before, but I like that it's just so prevalent on the surface of this ship. The consistency of it being used throughout the entire surface area here makes for an interesting bit of inlet greebling details. I like the pipes that hang around the top, and there are just a few complex and odd shapes thrown onto different areas of this build that look very difficult to actually pull off, especially that little pointed bit in the front. I'm assuming that's where the bridge is, and also the intake, or perhaps an output, on the very top of the ship. And then I've been looking forward to talking to this model by Red, not just because this image is amazing, it is officially one of the single greatest titles to a piece that I have ever read in the history of me doing this video for like three years now. The title of this creation is 55736275 by 4E7171A7961627675666666. Yes, I got that right. So not only is this design quite tastefully done, the builder has quite a good sense of humor about the whole thing, and I highly recommend you check out the link for this one in the description below because he's got an excellent, insightful uh, description attached to the bottom of this particular build. The techniques that really stick out to me are, of course, the twisting tubes that reach up from the bottom. That does not look easy to, uh, to put together. In fact, I'm sure there's a lot of weird pieces that pop out during that process. The trans blue cones and or spires that stick out the top really remind me of kind of an HR Geiger or Matrix style of uh, tech build. And then we have some wonderful shapes used to make the somewhat organic and of course humanoid design for both of the robots. Of course, this is meant to mimic the creation of Adam, that very famous art piece. And I like that even the organic bit of building at the bottom underneath this robot here, still on its own looks very, very mechanical. And then Yvonne Brick Bandit made a build called Swerve. What's fun about this model is that there's no particular techniques that look crazy or super complex. Nothing about this build really pops out and says, wow, I could never ever make a connection like that. Everything here feels very approachable, yet I haven't quite seen a car in LEGO that really looks like what we're looking at right now. It's so low, it's so wide, there's just the right amount of style and sleekness. That relatively new windscreen piece is getting put to very good use, and it's just fun to see such a unique and interesting design for a vehicle come out without a designer having to break their back putting together really weird and strange, delicate connections. And now we're getting into some very interesting historical builds. This is from Henrik Jensen, and this is the Savoia MS-65, part of a diorama as well. This was a real Italian racing seaplane that I think was originally designed back in 1929. So pretty ancient design, but still so fun and sleek. The model itself is very cleverly put together. I really appreciate also the, uh, the extra spray detail that's done to the top, really chromifying the top. I know that people shudder when they see painted bricks. Personally, I think it's very acceptable in this particular situation. And I just love to see when designers get inspired by an excellent piece of uh, engineering history and do their darndest to make it look awesome in Lego bricks like we've seen here. No doubt this is also one of the planes that helped inspire the design from Porco Rosso. Or maybe this is the exact one for all I know. And then we're also taking a similar trip down memory lane, at least in terms of design history, when we come to Max build the Sikorsky UH-34D Seahorse. It's one of the last piston engine helicopters. It didn't have too long of a life in terms of service. Started in the 50s, ended in the 70s, but it's got such a distinct and interesting shape for a helicopter. He built his model in orange, which really makes the whole thing pop quite well. 
And I love the inclusion of the sort of rounded over grill slopes that we see in the back here, right behind the main propeller. The excellent arc that moves down towards the back rotor. And the rounded over nose in the front feels very, very smooth. And there's just something that feels so personal about celebrating uh, old engineering design when building in Lego bricks. I love that droop for the top main rotors, how they come down a little bit when it's not flying. Now we've moved on to the last build of the week. This is from Michael Kanemoto and it is called White Spirit Wolf. This has got just so many unique and interesting design choices going for it. First off, you don't really see a life-size head of a wolf built in LEGO too often. And usually when you do see large scale builds like this, they are not approached in this particular fashion. Look at the design choices on the inside of the head here. I do not envy the initial calculations that this designer must have had to do in order to really get this thing to come together, be structurally sound. But at the end of it, you've got this interesting, angular, sharp, icy kind of feel when it comes to the final model. At the end of the day, it is a white wolf. It kind of has a snow-like feature already going for it. And the proportions and angles that make up the jagged mouth, cutting eyes, and sharp ears are all very, very convincing. The eyes are relatively piercing, which is fun. There's in fact a lot of depth there that he managed to capture with the different dish pieces. And this is just a strange, unique model that uh, you don't really get to see too often built from Lego bricks. It's just unique in so many fun ways. And anyways, that is going to be it for the top 10 mocks of the week. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is by far my most favorite thing to do throughout the week. Talk about cool, fun, interesting designs and uh, hopefully share them with people that also appreciate the same thing. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe, share the video, do whatever you want to do, check out the web store, whatevs. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault.